UFOs. People claim to see them all the time. Disc-shaped ones, balls of light, motherships. We can picture them from the outside, but what do they look like on the inside? Who has been up there? And what did they see? Join us as we investigate famous alien abductions and the abductees' descriptions of inside UFOs. A global effort has begun. Secret files hidden from the public for decades, detailing every UFO account, are now available to the public. We are about to uncover the truth behind these classified documents. Find out what the government doesn't want you to know. Unsealed Alien Files. Exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth. There is no end to the discussion of UFOs, but no subject is as controversial or riveting as alien abductions. And alien abduction is the only type of encounter in which eyewitness testimony can reveal details about the inside of unidentified flying objects. Details that can help us understand how aliens live and what they want. Unsealed case file, the Allagash abductions. Allagash Waterway, Maine, August 20th, 1976. The Allagash abduction is an absolutely fascinating case. This involved four men out fishing, uh, two brothers and two friends. They had had little luck with, with their um, catch, so they decided to go out onto the lake in a canoe. The four artist friends, including Chuck Rack, make a fire on shore to serve as a beacon for their nighttime fishing. What they don't know is that instead of catching something below, they are about to be caught by something above, something that will ultimately drive their friendships apart. As they were out on the lake, they saw in the sky a bright light, and it got closer and closer. It descended until they saw this huge UFO. The men later estimate the UFO to be 80 feet across. Now, one of them decided to try and signal at it with a flashlight. And the UFO then came closer. And by this time, the men were panicking. They decided to try and return to the shore. They were canoeing furiously. But a bright light shone down. And at that point, there was a disconnect. Suddenly, the men find themselves back on shore. But something is not right. They had no real memory of what happened, but they next thing found themselves back on the shore. And intriguingly, the fire had burnt down completely. Well, this was not possible. It had been blazing. So the implication was clear. There was loss or missing time. Something had happened to these four men. Uh, maybe it had been an hour, maybe longer, and yet they had no conscious memory of it. Missing time is a classic symptom of alien abduction. A lot of times when they recollect an experience like an alien abduction or a UFO sighting, uh, they realize that there's a big chunk of time that they just simply can't account for, and that's what you call missing time. Afterwards, they began to have flashbacks, dreams, nightmares. Uh, they went for regression hypnosis. And what emerged was an account that they were taken on board this ship. Hypnosis is still heavily debated among UFO researchers and scientists as a tool to investigate close encounters and buried memories of traumatic experiences. Hypnosis is the process of putting somebody into a very relaxed state. And what that means is, is they're not only very subjective to uh, maybe uh, memories being implanted in them, but it also kind of brings their walls down if they have memories that they have forgotten. During the Allagash hypnosis sessions, the men begin to recall an intense and vivid encounter with several aliens who allegedly took them aboard a UFO. They saw strange entities, uh, humanoid, but clearly not human and that, again, some medical procedure, which is often so central to these alien abduction experiences, was carried out. But skeptics point out that there are many key similarities to alien abduction that may be the result of auto-suggestion. 
People literally report that they are floated into the craft somehow, often through the solid surfaces, um, through walls, through ceilings, through the hull of the ships themselves. Often, after that, they find themselves in an enclosed space of some sort. Often this is reported as quite sterile and white in color. Skeptics hold up these common descriptions as reasons to doubt UFO abduction testimony. But if many of the descriptions are all similar, could it also be the truth? There are frequent reports of a table or a raised platform in the center of what's often described as a fairly round but otherwise featureless space. When you listen to stories of abductions and the uh, settings that they will recollect, some of them and most of them will actually remember being in some type of medical room, medical examination room with equipment around and their abductors above them. But you, you have to assume that that's not the only part of the ship. Coming up, we investigate a famous abductee couple who are shown much more than just the medical room inside a UFO. This is Unsealed, Alien Files. Welcome back to Unsealed, Alien Files. Many abductees provide similar reports of being taken by aliens to medical rooms inside UFOs. Skeptics and believers all have the same question. Why? Unsealed Case File. The Betty and Barney Hill Abduction. September 19, 1961. Portsmouth, New Hampshire. This was a case of a couple returning home late at night, driving down uh, the archetypal lonely country road uh, near Exeter, New Hampshire. Betty and Barney Hill were driving down the highway uh, when they witnessed a UFO. The couple initially describes the craft as multicolored lights flashing across the moon. The UFO rapidly descends, and Barney stops their car in the middle of the highway. A huge, silent, disc-shaped craft hovers in front of them. Using binoculars, Barney claims to see 11 humanoid figures staring out of the row of windows. And as the craft then hovered over their car, cast a big light down on them. Fearing for their lives, the couple jumps back in their car, but are pursued by the UFO. The next thing they know, they wake up 35 miles farther down the road. This was a route and a journey that they were familiar with. So what happened in that period of so-called missing time? Despite the shared incident, Betty and Barney Hill try to return to normal. And under regression hypnosis, out came an account that uh, it wasn't just a distant sighting of a UFO, but this thing actually landed, and they were forcibly taken onto the craft. Under hypnosis, the Hills recount harrowing stories. The medical examinations, the abductors uh, looming over them, taking bodily fluid and samples. Uh, they both recollected this, and you've got to ask, well, what, what really happened to Betty and Barney Hill? Barney Hill claims the aliens were almost human and that they took him to a small examination room and placed him on a rectangular table. Firstly, it does appear that a lot of this is quite functional. Um, it's minimalistic, it's sterile. If people report a medical procedure or physical examination, the parallels with our own operating theaters are quite interesting. But the similarities don't end there. There are also motifs, I believe, that one can recognize from science fiction. And of course, the relationship between sci-fi and ufology is complex. Skeptics say abductees borrow from sci-fi. Uh, other people say it's the other way around. But during Betty Hill's therapy, she reports that the human-like aliens scraped her skin with a knife. They also pierced her with a needle and she even held a book written in a language she did not recognize. But what are the abductees really seeing? And why, despite the traumatic events, are their surroundings eerily familiar? One phenomenon 
that's been noted with a lot of the abduction reports is what's called cultural tracking. The idea that the technology the abductees report is almost just a little bit ahead of us, our own technology, but not so far ahead of us that it's indistinguishable. A viewing screen is obviously a viewing screen. A computer does seem to be a computer even though it's different in some respects from our own. So there's a, a sort of familiarity here. Which may explain why experiencers and abductees who are in different parts of the world that experience uh, different abductors with different physical features, why the ships themselves are different as well. With so many common similarities across many abductee reports, the question remains, is alien abduction testimony merely a fabrication? Or is it an attempt to make sense of something beyond human comprehension? Coming up, we reveal the vast interior of a UFO mothership from one of the most well-known alien abductions of all time. This is Unsealed Alien Files. Welcome back to Unsealed Alien Files. Many abductees who have allegedly witnessed the inside of a UFO report surroundings of a strangely familiar, yet advanced technology. But one man's now famous encounter describes something much more. A mothership. Unsealed case file. The Travis Walton abduction. November 5th, 1975. Apache Sitgreaves National Forest, Arizona. Travis Walton is employed on a logging crew in Arizona. After his shift ends, the crew drive back to camp. When a bright light appears just off the road, Travis decides to get a closer look. Now, Travis Walton was a bit of an extrovert, a, a bit of a daredevil. And while all his uh, friends and work colleagues were screaming at him to get back in the truck, Travis Walton actually walked towards this UFO, almost like he was challenging it, like quite aggressively. But suddenly, Walton is engulfed by a beam of light coming from the UFO, and he disappears from view. At this point, he was struck by a beam, and it literally took him off his feet, threw him through the air, and his uh, colleagues thought that he had been killed. Walton's co-workers drive away in a panic and later report his disappearance to the local sheriff. But five days after the incident, Walton's brother-in-law receives a call. Travis Walton himself turned up some days later, disorientated, disheveled, miles away, with little recollection of what had happened to him. And it was only later under regression hypnosis that a fuller story emerged. Travis tells a terrifying story of being subjected to invasive medical examinations and extended confinement. Over the years, Travis Walton has uh, agreed to sit a number of polygraph tests. Now again, if somebody was lying or had something to hide, I suspect he would have avoided putting himself in that position. If alien abduction is truly happening, what do the abductors want? If an intelligent civilization comes here and sees a incredibly inferior race, and their question is, how did the human race get there? How did this life form that has made these big buildings and they drive around in these cars, how did they come to be? Well, what are they gonna do? We could probably safely assume they're gonna do the exact same thing we would and experiment. While Walton's claims of a medical exam are a common thread among abductees, it is his description of the inside of the ship that defies explanation. He talks about multiple rooms and he seems to have had some freedom uh, at some point to move around uh, within the interior. He saw, for example, one space which he almost likened to a planetarium. Walton describes a domed room with what seems to be a control chair in the center. 
he sat in this thing. There seemed to be some sort of controls. He played around with them. And it was almost like the, uh, like you see in a planetarium where stars appear on the ceiling. Now, he figured it probably wasn't a good idea that he continue to play with these controls, but it's one of the rare instances we have in an abduction uh, account of somebody actually getting to try out the technology for themselves. Walton is then escorted to another room in the spaceship that he claims is as large as an airplane hangar. He reports this as being a cavernous area where within the ship, there were all these smaller craft, rather like the one that he was taken into. Walton witnesses multiple disc-shaped craft parked in the room that are each up to 60 feet in diameter. The intriguing parallel here is, I guess, the idea of an aircraft carrier. I mean, people talk in the UFO field and with alien abductions about scout ships and mother ships. It's clear from Travis Walton that he was taken from a scout ship onto a mothership. Are UFOs encountered on Earth merely the pathfinders for a colossal mothership? Again, if one considers Travis Walton's account of all these other spaceships just existing within one space in the larger ship, it gives you some sense of perspective here. It tells you that the mothership must be huge. And I mean, some alien abduction accounts talk about spaceships the size of strip malls and football fields. Clearly, that's what Travis Walton was dealing with. When you look at the stories about the shape and the size and the color and the texture of the alien spaceships that these abductees are taken away in, there just are a wide variety of species and types of craft or UFOs that are visiting us and are above our skies. Up next, we investigate alien abduction behavior and discover that it may not be much different from our own. Come back to Unsealed Alien Files. The time to act is now. Tell us your story. Alien abduction evidence suggests that UFO motherships may be hiding in our orbit and sending scout ships to examine our planet and its various life forms, including the human species. But some experts maintain their actions and methods are not unlike our own. Now, alien abduction tales are very hard to believe. It's a tough pill to swallow, don't get me wrong. But when you truly compare it and contrast it to the human race, to the science that we know, that we've learned from, that we've developed in just the last 100, 150 years, when you look at that, we're on the same path. There's absolutely no difference between these crazy stories that some like to dismiss as just being fantasy versus our science that we've already done. So I think we're just pretty much on a crash course for the same path. It's just a matter of who's gonna do it first. In all of these abduction reports, what's really critically missing is some absolutely definitive corroboration. Eyewitness testimony is important, and when it's corroborated independently, that's evidentially significant. But what we really need is information. And I think it's only a matter of time that if, if abductees are truly experiencing uh, these types of rides on an alien spacecraft. Some of them are more joyous than others, admittedly, but if they really are experiencing this, I think one day our digital technology will capture it. The extraterrestrials, if that's what we're dealing with, would only have to slip up once. And an abductee would only have to get lucky once and sneak something off the craft, and it's game over. And I look forward to the day when someone will manage to smuggle some artifact off a spaceship. And when that day comes, abductees may end up being the ones to prove the existence of extraterrestrials once and for all. This is Unsealed. Alien Files, exposing the biggest secret on planet Earth.